All right, we're going to get started, and we're going on to chapter 27 now. This is Jeffrey Mann, author, reading from his book, The Naked Mind from Which Nothing Can Be Hidden. Uh, these are just excerpts to bring you into the feel of the book and to get you interested in reading the whole book, which is cells of these beautiful bits of information which you will, I think, enjoy very much. The monastery was ancient, immense and very cold. A perfect view of Fuji Mountain framed the meditation courtyard where he was being hurried across by the three monks. The disguise of the traditional grey quilted gown kept him warm in the freezing temperature. The large, wide-brimmed woolen hat was pulled down over his face. It was assumed that satellite surveillance was searching for him together with ground intelligence. They knew that he was in Japan and his looks were a dead giveaway. His look-alike decoys had been dispatched under heavy guard in other direction. The three samurai guards were kept out of sight, but they were there all right, along with an unseen host of some other kind. He was sure of that. A modern enclosed space was at the back. The plastic surgeon, another Laura recruit, met him at the door. Inside was a contemporary, well-heated suite with wall-to-wall thick, white wall carpeting and impressionistic paintings on the wall. There was a sharp, tangy aroma of pine logs burning in the iron grate of a large stone fireplace set into the far wall, right in front of the sofa, and two deep leather chairs, giving the room a sense of warm coziness. Ishmaru welcomed him, bowing deeply from the waist. At last, Michael Crawford, we meet. This is such a great honor, a privilege for me, he said. He was tall, rail-thin, and wore old-fashioned round gold-rimmed glasses perched on the end of a bony nose that centered a long, shining, and friendly face. Yes, as you can see, I'm a bit old-fashioned in some ways, but when it comes to my work, you can be sure you're in good hands. Shall we get started? I understand from our mutual friend Laura, who I expect is with us right now, that time is important. Your change should be undertaken, as you say, expediently. Just what did Laura tell you, Michael asked? That she would help us change your face and give you a different identity to lift your morale and perhaps even confuse the enemy. I see. Just how is this going to be done? This does not look like an operating room to me. Absolutely. But this surgery will be undertaken without instruments. Laura will assist me by morphing your cellular composition. My skill here is to sculpt your facial structure into another form. You'll be able to see the process, actually feel it, and even give your approval to the final design. So you've done this before then? Yes, once. I'm afraid that was at first. I was an unbeliever. Laura convinced me. We operated on a child from a village near here whose face had been badly burned in a house fire. The parents, of course, were not present, and I did what they believe was miraculous surgery in my regular clinic, which is some distance from here. This monastery was chosen as the most appropriate location for day's work, again by your Laura. Have you known her long? Why no, just a few days, but it seems like a lifetime. Shall we get started? Why not, Michael said. His life seemed to be careening along out of control, at least out of his control. Laura seemed to know everything. He no longer questioned her judgment or timing. Events were moving too fast. All that he was sure of was that his life, and more importantly his freedom, was definitely at risk. He was way out of his league, and so had to put his life, all his actions, unquestionably in her care, at least for the time being. I thought this room would be the most suitable, Ishmaru said, crossing to the room and opening a door into a bedroom, one wall of which was entirely covered with a mirror. Heavy curtains were drawn across the window. A reclining chair had been placed in such a way that it would allow him to watch everything and give Ishmaru free movement in any direction. There was a faint smell of rose and sandalwood incense. Fresh cut flowers and a wide circular crystal bowl were placed on a low black lacquer table by the window. The carpet was again wall to wall thick white wool. Only barely audible sound 
of water trickling over rocks broke the deep mountain silence. Ishmaru indicated him to sit in the chair. Okay, Michael, you have always wanted this, now it's here. A new handsome face. I recommend that it has a hint of Japanese to it. It will help them throw off all those people after you. There'll be no records. A full new Japanese identity has been arranged for you. There'll be no pain. There'll be a sort of strange sensation as though your facial tissues have become mushy, like clay. That's all. Okay, okay with you? Any change would be great after look at my lookalikes for a week, Laura. I'm ready, and thanks. I really appreciate you doing to all this trouble for me. Ishmaru is an artist as well as being an excellent plastic surgeon. He has volunteered to do this work for us. So let's begin. Are you ready, Ishmaru? Yes, I'm ready, Ishmaru said aloud, presumably to Laura, and opened his hands in front of him, palms turned upward as in prayer. A faint, soft humming sound, like an active beehive, began to fill the room and increased in its intensity. Colors faded strangely into a pinkish, sparkling wash, like fresh, powdered snow, wind-blown in bright sunlight. Michael's face became warm, his edges softened and started to melt, like everything sort of flattened down and went mushy. The room was filled with a faint yellow-pink color. Ishmaru's hands became surrounded with a shining kind of light light. His whole body seemed to glow. He looked as though he was in a trance, but very pleased with it. Michael glanced in the mirror. He was surprised to see that his body was glowing too. His face was a blur of blue-violet iridescent light. He felt Ishmaru starting to work on his face, molding it like a sculptor might work with clay. He never seemed in any doubt. His hands kept moving without hesitation, shaping and smoothing his face which now seemed somehow remote, not even part of him, for what seemed like the longest time. The buzzing sound seemed louder now, the whole room filled with light. Flickering shapes and transparent forms moved through the radiance. Hundreds of them filled the room. Michael felt and saw iridescent bubbles, heard popping sounds going through his head from front to back, side to side, like broom handles of light. Bang! In one side and out the other. Then he dropped off to sleep. He woke up in the other room on the sofa in front of the fire. A heavy blanket pulled up to his cheek. He was cold and shivering. All done, Michael. You look terrific. Everybody agrees. Drink the soup on the table in front of you. He looked down, and there on the table was a large bowl of steaming noodle soup. Drink it all up and go back to sleep. He woke up in the morning feeling wonderful, but different. His face. He hadn't even seen it yet. What if it was awful? Everybody had gone, it seemed. He hardly remembered what had happened the night before. Throwing off the blanket, he ran into the bedroom. The sheer curtains were drawn. Bright sunlight streamed in. There was a stranger in the mirror. His face? He didn't recognize anything of himself. Same body, but the face? Unknown. Was he looking at his own? He opened his mouth and wrinkled up his nose and mouth. The face in the mirror moved with his grimaces. He even stuck out his tongue to be really sure. Everything moved with him. It was his face, his new face. Now he could examine it minutely, become acquainted. He was half Japanese, banana yellow skin, hint of a slant in his eyes, iris green gold. Nice. He liked that. Hair thick and dark, lips and nose generous, but chiseled with prominent high cheekbones. He had a male model's face. Very nice. What a change. It would take some getting used to. What do you think? Laura asked. You did a great, great job. Thanks. Don't mention it. Personally, I preferred your original. It had you more character. Now you are pretty. The human girls will be after you. Watch out. Check out your eyes and thought processes, memory and sensory centers. Everything has been enhanced. You've had a total refit. She was right. He could see much better, sharper, and his memory was crystal clear. Focus and attention, tight, very different. It was like getting into a new automobile for the first time and gingerly trying out the different unfamiliar controls. This is all going to take some time getting used to, but thanks again. I am reborn. 
indeed.